Greetings and welcome, fellow noble lady, lords and ladies, my fellow countrymen, to this new Let's Play series that I'm just going to dub the Semi-Grand Campaign. Why Semi? Because, well, uh, I probably should explain what a Grand Campaign is, just in case anyone here doesn't know. Because I certainly didn't know when I first heard the concept, but basically... As I am now finally diving into the Paradox Grand Strategy games, there is a concept of uh, basically playing through one game, converting to save into the, uh, into uh, something that the a game that comes afterward chrono chronologically can read, and playing on from that point. And that sounds like a really fun idea on paper. I, however, feel that is slightly undercut by the fact that if you do that, you end up basically just uh, being overpowered at some point or another. I mean, it is technically possible to conquer the world in Crusader Kings 2. Now, of course, this does not mean the entire world, just the world that's available to us, and it's a very big world already. But then, where does that leave you to go when you go into Europa Universalis 4? Let alone where you can go in uh, Victoria 2? Or Hearts of Iron? Um, just gonna gloss over the fact that March of the Eagles is not in here, because I've heard things. That's not the point. <sighs> we are gonna start in Crusader Kings. Now, I'm not going to start all the way at the earliest start date, at uh, 796, 69 AD, because frankly there's not much point, because I want to play the Dutch. Why? Well, I am Dutch, that helps, but basically I uh, just want to be a... Uh, a little bit living through my country's history. Maybe do things my countrymen never did or never saw able to do. Whatever reason. And we're gonna make the Netherlands great again. Now, of course, you can't technically become the Netherlands in Crusader Kings 2. Because that tag does not exist. So we're just gonna go with custom game setup. In the... The Stamford Bridge event, yeah, the High Middle Ages. Used to be called the Stamford Bridge, but I'm guessing this is a little bit more uh, fun, I guess. And we will be playing as the Duke of Holland. Well, technically it's the Duke of West Frisia. They have been changing over some things, I guess. It doesn't matter. Because while I could go and roll back to the, uh, the Viking Age. And also have a West Frisia with a Dutch Duke. In Lotharingia. I can find him. Yeah. Well, this one is actually Norse, but... He does have a Count Vessel. Yeah, who's Dutch. But we're not gonna do that. High Middle Ages it is. And I have to go find him again. Well, luckily he's on the top. I could uh, design my ruler, but I'm not going to. So we're gonna stick with the Gorulfing family. We actually stayed around for quite a long while, but they were eventually just... Uh, overpowered, I suppose, by circumstance. We will be the Duke of West Frisia, which is actually quite small, and we are was it uh, twelve years old? That is not great. Uh, all right, let's go into this now. 
I will not be playing on Iron Man, as much fun as that may be, because I kind of want to be able to uh, dictate my, when I save. Uh, we will be loading up some rules. So basically, I'm turning off the Sunset Invasion, where the Aztecs invade. That is not necessary, I mean, I have the DLC because it was fun, but eh, not necessary for the fun that I want to have. As well as the, um, what's the other rule? And basically, I turned off the seduction of the uh, AI a bit. Well, I'm not entirely sure where it is. Let's see. Way of life. Yeah, I've turned off the seduction. So, to prevent basically the AI from constantly hitting on my wife. That's annoying. And turning these rules off does not uh, stop me from being able to go Iron Man, but, you know. The rest I'll leave on, and we'll just find out what this is all going to be about. I mean, I probably will not even uh, unpause this first episode, but, you know, we have to start somewhere. And I realize I could technically have started this uh, campaign in Imperator Rome. Even though there is absolutely no Dutch culture at the time. And you could be generous and say that the Frisians are technically in that region, but frankly I think the Belgae are probably closer in culture uh, to what the Dutch are. Or will be. Because right now the Dutch is slightly undercut by being part of the HRE and under partially Fr part of France. This needs to be rectified. And I probably shouldn't slam on the desk. The Dutch need to be strong, powerful, independent, and most of all, ruling the entire coastline. Now, there is an achievement where, as the Dutch, or Frisians, I suppose, uh, you control everywhere from Jutland to Brittany, because historically they sort of technically kind of did. Uh, we, I'll see how far we can get. Basic experiments, however, is still to form the Kingdom of Frisia and to become independent of the HRE. Or become the HRE. Whichever is easier. So we have the nice little uh, Frisian uh, shield over here. And I do realize that for the thumbnail I've using the anachronistic modern uh, day Frisian flag. Yeah, it was the easiest to find. Sue me. Don't sue me, I don't have money. Uh, as for the shapes on the flag, as well as the red ones on the Frisian flag, those are not hearts. <laughs> They're lily pads. Yeah, I had to look that up too. Anyway. In order to create the Kingdom of Frisia, we just need two duchy titles. Hey, Tiggy. Yeah, I'm currently busy. Can you just lie down? We need two duchy titles and uh, at least 51% control of this land. Well, that should be easy enough. As far as the Jure Ducal titles go. Now, as we are currently the Duke of West Frisia, which is actually kind of nice because it's no longer the Duke of Holland, because I don't like that name <laughs> all that much. <clears throat> because personally, I am uh, I am much more in favor of being Brabantian, but that's not really an option here because unfortunately, this guy is currently in control of well, basically the duchy, although the, the duchy itself doesn't exist. And he's German. In fact, this German guy controls most of the land that I want. Now, as far as the Frisian, they have been nerfed since last I played them. Because... Basically, uh, Brabant and Flandern used to be part of Frisia, and they are no longer that. Because I, I guess they de jure drifted out of that. Um, which de jure? That's the Empire. 
Because they are now in the Jure Empire, Kingdom of uh, Lotharingia. Which does not exist. But this guy may make it. Uh, well. Luckily, we have two things working for us. One, this guy is old. He's likely to die quite soon. He's got multiple kids. Although I think, let's see, it's Agnatic Cognatic. All right. What? Agnatic Cognatic. So basically when he dies, his uh, titles will be divided. That'll be my opportunity to strike. First, however, we need to start setting up our council to do something and goodness, my spy master is trash. <laughs> right. First order of business. Is there a better steward, please? There is someone, but he's a commander. Kind of don't want to do that then. Eh, very well, I mean... You have some traits that at least help. Alright, well, collect some taxes for me, would you? I also want to start uh, fabricating claims. Now, I know before anyone says it, that I have a de jure claim on Sticht. I know. I could go to war for just that, if I wanted to. But I want to hold this place myself. If I press for a de jure claim, uh, then this guy will still be in charge of that particular place. Which is not something I want. Uh, he also controls uh, Ofreisel. That's a little bit of a modern interpretation of that province, I suppose. It should really be called Oversticht. Oh well. It doesn't matter. Yeah, the only other Dutch guy you can reasonably play with any sense of uh, fun is this guy, Count Diederik of Gelre. But again, wrong province. I am being a bit tribalistic here, I know, but that's, that's not the besides the point. I have played as, well, a, f a previous version of this guy, and actually it is a little bit easier to form Frisia as him because he's inside the Duchy of Lorraine, so it's easier to go after the various bits of um, of land. Whereas I am an outsider, and Des will not have the same capacity, although I don't think this guy has any real pacts. Yeah, just some non-aggression. That's not immediately a concern. Also, I need to find a wife. And I think I'm gonna go for Adelheid, Princess of Hungary. Because why would you not? Yeah. It'll give me a chance to actually inherit Hungary. Possibly. Uh, she doesn't have a bloodline, unfortunately. Uh, that's the wrong one. Um, educator... Right, where is she on the line? I can't, can't see it right now, let's see. Right, I've already got the spouse select, so I can't do that. Alright, let's have a look at our own character. We are idolizer, we are willful, we are indolent, we are just, we are cynical. How very Dutch. We need a focus. And... Uh, yeah, we are mostly geared towards spying, I suppose. We don't have any bonus traits for that. I'm going to go going for martial education. I also have uh, my sister who needs an education. 
He is a hunchback, she has a stutter, willful, haughty. So I want her to be humble. My other sister has no traits, she's six years old. She can focus on duty. And my heir, Adela. Apparently I'm not getting any bonuses for her. Let's see. Why am I not seeing any particular traits that have bonuses here? I also have duty. Because, let's see, the family line of the Garul thing is currently quite small. We have only four living members and they're all children. Which isn't great. Now, the Kingdom of Frisia actually did used to exist in-game. With the house for Qualding. But well, they were deposed in uh, some time ago. Don't know exactly. Yeah, because uh, my knowledge of Parisian history is quite limited. But from what I read on Wikipedia, this guy actually was the last of the pagan kings of Frisia, I suppose. Well, I, either this guy or some other rot bout. Uh, the old item natural death. I think it's this one. Who basically lived during the age of Charlemagne. And uh, when Charlemagne's father died, he used the upheaval to basically uh, try to create, carve out a little bit more uh, territory for himself. Didn't go so well. <laughs> he was probably crushed by Charlemagne. <clears throat> but the most anecdotal story that I have heard about it is when the Frisian region was being Christianized, the uh, Duke, uh, they, no, the um, Bishop of Utrecht, this place, a guy named Willibrod, essentially uh, made some progress convincing Radbau to give up his pagan ways and become Christian. And the story is, as far as I understand it, is that Rothbard was actually about to be uh, baptized and he posed a question <laughs> to Willibrod will I see my ancestors again in the afterlife? which you know understandable he's believed his whole life that he will to which Willibrod, Willibrod answered so diplomatically no my lord they are all heathen pagans they're in hell <laughs> At which point, but about quite generously said, fuck this. Well, I'm paraphrasing, but he basically said, screw this. I am staying pagan. I want to feast with my ancestors. Which you got to admit, that's the dumbest bit of marketing Willowport could have done. Why not lie? God forgives. But yeah, that's basically the story as I understand it. And uh, once he was defeated by uh, Charlemagne, uh, Rothbard basically fled to England, I think, somewhere, and was never able to return because he just never uh, was able to build up enough support to retake his land. And so the duchies were divided amongst Charlemagne's uh, loyal subjects, and subsequently the Frisian culture started to wither away. Although, technically that didn't quite happen on, uh, well, go away is a strong word. They morphed, more or less, as languages, as cultures and languages do, because those are a little bit intertwined here, uh, into becoming Dutch. Although, to say that people are Dutch at this stage is stretching the definition a little bit. 
All right, let's actually finish up setting up the rest of the council. Uh, do you have any commander traits? No. All right, well, you start training then. Uh, just scheme. You're not good at anything else. And I suppose you can hunt apostates. I mean, you are pretty good, but we don't have any heresies around, so go to the Pope and tell him how nice I am. Still some special titles. Well, I can figure that out later. Anyways, that'll do for this episode. Thank you all for watching. Next time, we'll start uh, actually uh, turning off the pause button. Thank you all for watching. See you then.